All right, like a pit bull locked on to a leg or arm or somebody, I'm locked on to the offensive line. I'm going to do, uh, I have a lot more stuff coming up for defense and skills, but I want to really finish and dial in and focus on the Miami Dolphins offensive line before we enter the NFL 2022 draft. Because when you really look at the tape, Armstead, Williams, very big pieces, very, very big pieces. But there should still be concerns for those who are being objective to the talent that's remained from the 2021 roster that's coming into the 2022 roster on this offensive line. Now, things can change, but it's not going to be like waving a wand. Uh, oh, we got you know, McDaniel and a new scheme. and it's, everything's gonna be, it, it could be a lot better, but there are real concerns. But on the positive side, uh, Armstead, uh, Williams, and then Hunt at right guard are three very good pieces. And if they could just solidify even that right tackle spot or the center spot, and then maybe bring a vet in, you know, get somebody in that draft, then bring a vet in with a little extra money. It doesn't have to be a great vet. But to, to stabilize those two positions in case Dieter, Jackson, and Eichenberg don't play up to what they need to. If all that, if, if you could just do those little things, this offensive line could look substantially better. And that will change everything. But what I want to do here today is do a film study on the zone stretch plays. I mean, there'll be jet sweeps and boot outs, but the concepts are kind of the same for the blocking. So you can have the tools, the information to see what these guys are, uh, how they performed in the zone stretch. Now, it's true that Eichenberg, Dieter, and Jackson are more agility players. And the zone stretch really uh, benefits those type of players. But it's... Not just all that, because one of the most dangerous things for the zone stretch is when defenders decide to cap and attack. And so what that means is, say you got your defensive end. He doesn't follow the flow. He comes in and meets that tackle head on and tries to bookend him and cap it and drive it back to the cutback lane. Or if you get a D-tackle, he doesn't flow down the line of scrimmage. He shoots up, gets inside on that guard or that center, and takes control of that cutback lane. So you have to have a level of uh, run blocking either through strength or technique or both to prevent this capping issue. Now, we will see. Armstead, I feel, is really good at it. Williams, I think, is really good at it. Hunt, when you watch some of the tape... He doesn't really pop up as an issue, and sometimes he pops up as a, um, a benefit. But when we look at this tape, you're going to see, and you can have this in your memory, so when you watch the film this year, you'll be able to say, oh, man, this guy's improving. Look what he looked like last year. And it will give you a better gauge to let your heart out a little bit more and to belief that we're going to have a very successful season. So let's take a look at the tape and see what we see. All right, we're gonna open up. It's not a zone stretch run, it's a boot out, but the blocking concepts are, same, are the same. And you see right off the bat, Dita has trouble dealing with power and gets stood up. But then on the other side, you're gonna see Eichenberg doesn't make his chip block to pass him off to Jackson, who then can't handle the power. And if this was a running play, they'd be lit up like a Christmas tree and the play would have been dead. But it was a pass play. So over here, you're going to see it's a, a run by Ahmed to the right. And Jackson automatically takes a step to the left and loses position. And Dieter gets folded up like I talked about. And basically, the whole lane gets shut down. It was a nice block by Davis and a great run by Ahmed to make it happen. Again here, you see the zone stretch concept with the uh, boot out. But... Jackson doesn't cap his guy to pass him off to Dieter. And the, the whole blocking scheme gets ripped apart because he couldn't make that cap 
on the DT. And pay a play gets off as a touchdown. But again, this is uh, something you're going to see over and over again with Jackson. Now, again, you got the jet sweep motion. Eichenberg misses the block. Now, Davis is not going to be here next year, but he gets capped. And you can see how fragile the zone stretch run can be if that tackle can't prevent the capping. Again, another uh, zone stretch run. And Jackson just overshoots. And it just gets hand, manhandled big time. And Eichenberg misses his block, doesn't see the linebacker come in, and, and both really fail at their duties. Now, this one over here, Deed is getting blown up. But you got a six man offensive lineman on here. It's three against one to cap the end so the running back can get to the touchdown, get the touchdown. But it was three offensive linemen on one guy. And again, Dieter is getting blown up. Now, over here, zone stretch run. And you're going to see 90 caps hunt and 97 comes back and caps Davis and really ends the cutback lane and the outside. And this is the most dangerous aspect uh, for a zone stretch is these guys who can cap and hold and block the flow of the blockers. Again, over here, Jackson getting blown up, oversteps, just loses total control. Dita's doing a pretty good job riding, and Eichenberg just is too passive in his blocking. Ahmed could have maybe bounced outside, but I thought he should have hit that hole there. You don't want to stretch it out too long. So Eichenberg just kind of really, but that's, you know, like a, a rookie thing. But here again, Jackson getting blown up, holding. <laughs> and just kind of blocking the entire flow. This should have been a penalty. And then he comes in and he gets uh, the running back. Now on this one, zone, this is a zone stretch. And both ends cap the ends. The defensive end caps the, the tackle over here. 93 caps both Dieter and uh, Hunt. And then there's nothing coming back because Jackson can't hold his guy and Eichenberg just runs past the play. Now, this is not a zone stretch run, but knows Hunt on a move. And this is why I don't like him at tackle. He, he gets capped by a much smaller guy at linebacker. He's powerful in short areas, but you just don't think he brings the wood on the move. And Eichenberg did a good job cutting, but Hunt has to see like I again. This is not zone stretch. But Hunt on a move, and it's a linebacker. Uh, I mean, it's a cornerback, and he can't light that cornerback up. Just doesn't do enough. And the cornerback really gives his body up and just blows up the zone stretch run. So this is why, again, why I like Hunt at the guard position much better. Now, here's a zone stretch run. Everything's looking really good. Uh, Jackson's got his position right. Hunt does a really good job using his ability to seal the deal on that uh, inside lineman, a real nice job of agility, but now you have three on two, and Davis, he really couldn't make that block, and Duke should have been fast to get outside, but again, this shows the fragility of this play, of the zone stretch. You really, it's a lot of negative plays, and then you get a big one. Now, I like the way Dieter's fighting to get position. Doesn't look pretty, but he seals him, he caps him, but Jackson gets totally ripped apart by 59. I mean, thrown away like a rag doll, and he comes in and makes the play. This is why Jackson cannot play guard this year, and I think he's going to struggle also at tackle. Now, this is a jet sweep, and 41's the most important guy to block here. He comes up late to the line of scrimmage, but he's let free because Eichenberg and Jackson really don't communicate, but I think it was really mostly on Jackson. You see, he comes up late over here. He's the most critical guy. 96 just needs to get chipped because Waddle is the fastest guy on the field. He'll blow past him. Now, Eichenberg looks at Jackson like, all right, you understand what's going on? And Jackson starts to go to 41 to sweep around, but then he just stops. And he worries about 96, which is really not cognizant of what the situation is. And he's wasting his time on 96, who never would have caught Waddle. I mean, 41's right ahead, and he still can't catch him. But he stretches out the play long enough. Eichenberg did what he was, supposed to chip 96 and get to the next level. But again, Jackson just doesn't bring the mental goods. All right, so 
you could clearly see Hunt on occasion when he's pulling down the line of scrimmage, he's not able to generate that power to blow people off the ball. But I don't really expect to see him do that too much. But he has enough agility in that inside guard position to get himself in position along with his strength to be an effective player in this position. But I don't like him outside at tackle. Um, you can also see Dieter just really doesn't have the play strength to handle when defensive tackles meet him and they try to cap and control. That should be a major concern. Eichenberg was a rookie put in position. I don't think he really should have been in. And he he struggled with the strength part, but I think there was a lot of mental parts. So I I have the most confidence going forward in Eichenberg. I'm still a little concerned him at that right tackle spot because it looks like he could be capped pretty easily. And I know defenses are going to say, hey, if you see zone stretch, man, just cap Eichenberg. Now, here's the thing. We hear in that Jackson is also playing right tackle too. They say he's tra – so you have your first, second, and third round picks because it was two picks, second, and third for Eichenberg and first for uh, Jackson, all in that right tackle position. And Jackson looked disastrous. Now, if Eichenberg beats him out and he play, performs well, and even say Jackson doesn't really perform well and he's a bust or we don't see him produce until his second count, or down, what? as much as I, as I say I have issues with Greer, we have to judge his body of work. I mean, and in totality, all the way back to 2011, but really... All that matters at this stage is from 2019 on. And if Jackson doesn't pan out and Eichenberg does and Phillips does and he hits find somebody in this draft, that body of work is going to build up and be good enough to say, hey, man, this guy really helped us get to over the top. So I'm not really trying to say, oh, it's all over if Jackson doesn't pan out. It doesn't look like he's going to, but it's still... It might, it might. But if Jackson beats out Eichenberg, where does Eichenberg go? Does he play guard and Williams move into center? I don't know. So there's a lot of flux going on. For me, Eichenberg looks like the guy who might be able to find a position and, and really get some footwork. I'm not really super confident on that. Dieter, I know he can pass block. I know he's smart. It's that strength. You know, and I don't know at this stage if he's ever going to get much stronger. But at least he's serviceable. To me, Jackson's a major liability. It's very hard for me to believe for him to step up and improve enough to take a starting position. Because if they're trying to move him out to right tackle, they know he's just not strong enough at guard. So, all in all, we have three positions that are pretty solidified. Even if Dita's in there, it's not a total disaster. When he's in, he does bring some good. And it's that if we have opportunities to find a null event and a draft. So I'm going to do a little more work on this unit as a whole. There's still guys like Jones that maybe might step up and find their way. There's still a lot of growth. And no matter how much... Uh, we evaluate, things change dramatically from year to year, both good and bad. So we'll see. We'll see. But I don't think, don't expect a magic wand to be waved over to these players. To me, the biggest thing is not this new staff. It's the additions of Armstead, additions of Williams, whoever else they might add that's a quality player, and the play of Hunt that's going to make the biggest difference. So I'd still be hopeful because we're way ahead of where we were last year as far as talent. It's just these last few pieces, how they're going to pan out. Anyway, thanks for staying at the end. As Curtis saying, please like, comment, and subscribe. Comments mean the most. Subscribes and likes help us with the uh, Google overlords. You know, and when the Google overlords are happy, my sponsors, Ace Pred, they're happy. Keeps me in business. As I say, I like to do this. So please comment. I love that. Thank you for your views, subscribes, likes, comments, and such. Anyway, have hope. This, is a, this third and fourth pick is a big pick for us. It's a big, big pick. And I'm hoping 
that Greer goes for offensive line at the right players. That even if they had to trade up one more offensive player, quality offensive player on this line, whether it's guys from 2021 stepping up or new addition, will be big for us. Anyway, catch you next time. Be well. Go Fins. Bookies can earn hundreds to thousands of dollars from booking action with aceperhead.com.